Okay, people, so this is a continuation on. The last video was about Tories. This is about Labour. What the Labour Party needs to do to um, basically to encourage me to vote for them. Um, and there's a lot of areas. I mean, a big caveat I want to make here is these videos are not intended to be overtly cynical and negative. Um, although I do feel cynical if I'm being honest about politics right now. But I know there are a lot of um, good parliamentarians out there. And there are policies I agree with in both parties. The things I like about both parties. But I'm focusing on the contentions because that are, those are the things that I would like to see change. Um, you know, the good things are, are good, but they're not quite enough to make me want to vote for them at the moment. Um, this video will probably be a bit shorter on the grounds that the Tories are the ruling party and they're guaranteed to be in power for at least another two years um, if they win the next general election even longer. So I'm just going on um, on that. That's why that one was uh, longer because they're the ruling party, so it's what's happening right now. So when I'm looking at Labour, I'm looking more at a party of the future, like what they might propose and what they might enact. So uh, without further ado, feel free to multitask, to wash the dishes, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, better days, you mentioned something interesting. I'll just quickly mention this in our recent conversation. If you happen to be watching this, um, which is that some people make these very, I think we spoke about this, people make these flashy videos like five minutes, four minutes. And it's great, That that's great if, if you have the technology, but I can only work with what I've got. I've got a relatively simple laptop, I've got a built-in cam. Um, an Indonesian friend of mine actually did, she did mention some technology and I, I, I keep putting off, but I, I should look that up um, because I think things can be done with that. Um, but I'm never going to make a snappy three minute video about politics because I think it's just too, the issues are too complex and serious to just, to just be trivialized like that, I think. That's how I see it. That's why my videos are a bit longer. So feel free to multitask if you don't, or, you know, just watch as much as you can. But I do think it's important to discuss all the issues. Okay. Without further ado, the Labour Party, what would get me to vote Labour? I think if Starmer and Rayner really distance themselves from woke politics, this is something I've spoken about a lot, and I'm not going to get into big long-winded narrative about this, but basically, I think it's divisive, I think it's often inaccurate, um, and I think that uh, it can be toxic, and I want to see Rayner and Starmer distance themselves from that. If Starmer taking the knee two years ago, pathetic. Keir Starmer not being able to say what a woman is because he doesn't want to offend trans people. That's pathetic. Um, I want to see him and his party distance themselves a lot more from the sort of woke politics. You know, the Labour Party, you would expect them. In fact, what's going on with the strikes, whether you agree with it or not, that is basically traditional Labour Party politics. You know, it's a party that was built by the unions, supported by the unions. So, no Labour Labour leader can rationally be too hostile to the unions because it's it's the foundations of the party. But the problem is to be a party of government, it's a really difficult balancing act um, because they can't abandon their base, but they also have to pitch to a wider public. So I think being Labour leader and leader of Her Majesty's opposition is one of the toughest jobs in politics for that reason. You holding the government to account, and I think to a large extent, Starmer's actually done a good job of that. But you're also trying to unify your own party and prove that it could be a party of government. That's what these Corbynites don't get. They had their chance twice 2017, 2019, both times they were defeated. They're hammering Starmer and calling him a closet Tory and all the rest of it. But their ideology was put to the British people and it was rejected. If they want to see a Labour government, they need to get behind Starmer. Um, but then again, Starmer would be accused of being connected to them by the Daily Mail and the Tories. So it's a really difficult balancing act um, of wanting to be tough on the far left without wanting to polarise the Labour base. It's very difficult, actually. Um, but I think he has to do it. Um, 
but this sort of woke ideology, you know, um, promoting critical race theory, um, this decolonization of our public institutions, of our education curriculum, it's, I think it just goes too far. I think it's divisive. I think it doesn't show the whole picture. It's not objective. Um, and I just think it causes a lot more harm than good. Um, the Labour Mayor of London, I mean, Sadiq Khan is the woke prince. He's kind of a British Justin Trudeau. That guy goes out of his way to virtue signal on every woke cause of the day. And I appreciate in a city like London, a lot of people will support that. I also suspect there's a lot of Londoners who don't support it. Um, London's a big place. We shouldn't assume that all Londoners think alike and all Londoners are metropolitan um, woke people. It's not like that. Um, so this is something I would really like to see the Labour Party distance itself from. Um, I think Starmer should admit that it was a mistake to say me. He's never going to do that um, because it was a vacuous gesture. Dominic Rabb was right. It's a subservient move. I mean, taking the knee does nothing. If there's issues, for example, like racism in football, the correct approach is to tackle the racists, ban them from games, find them. Um, I don't think imprisoning them is the right move. Not when you get violent thugs escaping prison sentences, but I do think there should be a zero tolerance to them. I think ban them from games for a very long period. Um, that's the right approach to deal with racism. No player should have to put up with that, but um, again, taking the knee, what does that achieve? And I mean, I, I could talk, I could ha have a whole video talking about woke ideology, but to simplify things, suffice to say, I think it's divisive, dishonest, and bigoted. And I think Labour should distance itself from that. But you have this strong contingent within Labour to push it. So again, it isn't easy. But, you know, I really think a lot of Labour voters, are, they're ordinary people. They're not, um, they're not interested in giving themselves the correct pronouns or um, pushing critical race theory or all the rest of it. Most Labour voters are just ordinary people who uh, want a functioning government um, and who want a Labour Party that is practical and certainly respects its core values, things like workers' rights. That's a very big one. I would expect the Labour Party to be very much for that, but I think it's a question of the user cliche getting back to bread and butter issues. Labour really needs to do that. I've perhaps more recently with strikes, um, whether or not you agree with it, that is Labour history. Um, a tougher stance on crime. Definitely this is a big, big one for me. One area where the Tories have always picked themselves is being the party of law and order. Now, recently, Starmer and Rayner sort of said they were the party of law and order. Rayner has a bit of a reputation, apparently, for being tough on crime, which is good. Um, some have even said she might challenge Starmer for the leadership. I think it would be a big mistake for Labour to change their leader right now, though. A very big mistake. Because Starmer's actually doing quite well at the dispatch box. Labour's won by election, so I think it would be a mistake to not give Starmer a chance in a general election. Um, a very big mistake. If he loses the next general election, then we can have a leadership contest. I just think it's foolish to change leader before a general election. Um, you know, just on speculation. Um, but this is a very big issue for me, and I think uh, I mean, Labour isn't at the bottom of the queue when it comes to my trust and parties on crime. At the very bottom would be the Greens. I think if the Greens had their way, they would close all prisons. I think they would be genuinely quite dangerous and reckless on law and order policies. But I don't particularly trust Labour. I think they are softer overall than the Tories. Um, so they need to prove otherwise. Some good policies would be if they continue some of the better policies of the Tories, for example, the, the Victims Bill that Dominic Rabb introduced. If Labour expands that, if Labour pushes for much more accountability of the Parole Board and the Sentencing Council. Horrible case happened in my city last year, and I won't talk about this too much because it is depressing. Young lad, 18 years old, he was basically murdered by a gang of 10 thugs 
and these ten other lads um, were high on drink and they were out looking for trouble. And this was a premeditated, savage, cowardly, evil crime. Uh, they've just been sentenced at Newcastle Crown Court. They got between eight and fifteen years, and the one who uh, used the knife got longer. Uh, of course, none of them are named for legal reasons. Um, I think it's too soft. I think eight years is far too soft for that. I think a minimum of 15 years would be better. People might argue they didn't pull the, die, the knife, but they, they were part of the gang. They surrounded them like a pack of animals. It's crimes like this. Just, it, it, it puts me in a dark place in terms of it gets me very depressed and angry and Jack Woodley was the young lad who was killed. If um, it's, it's uh, in the news at the moment, so you can look it up. But his mother showed incredible, incredible courage and soldier under the circumstances. And they've wanted an appeal. They they were actually going for an appeal, indicating they have no remorse. Absolute scum. Uh, but anyway. That is the sort of crime I want Labour to be taking a much harder stance on. The problem with Keir Starmer is sometimes um, he sounds too much like a lawyer. And this could be from his background as uh, Chief Prosecutor um, for the Prime Prosecution Service. Um, which perhaps actually worked in his favour because he could say, well, I was a prosecutor. Some would say, well, one thing that's followed Starmer is why did he not prosecute Savile? Why did he not prosecute... X, Y, and Z, these are issues he'll have to answer. Um, you know, if he's a prosecutor, was he a tough prosecutor? I think Starmer needs to sound... I think, actually, his performances at PMQ recently have been better. He sounded more alive rather than this kind of robotic lawyer that he's often sounded like. Um, people don't want a clown. They don't want Boris Johnson, but they do want a leader who has some passion, and I think the Starmer we've seen recently has been better in that sense. So yeah, I, I want Labour, and not just words, I want them to prove by policy they will be tougher on crime. People are sick of soft justice. Um, and much more honesty on taboo issues like Islamist extremism and frankly British Pakistani grooming gangs. Both these areas I think Labour are weak. A lot of those grooming gangs have operated in Labour seats. And the fact of the matter is, the police involved, the authorities, were hesitant to act from the fear of being seen as racist. Now, the Tories don't come out squeaky clean on this. I do believe that um, Labour still puts political correctness above public safety as a, as a general thing, not just the grooming gangs, which is a national scandal on par with the Jimmy Savile scandal. But... Um, just generally, I mean, Islamic extremism. I want Labour politicians to use the word Islamic extremism. And yes, there's far-right extremism, but Islamic extremism has killed a lot more people in recent years. Um, they're both a threat, but Labour needs to show that they take that problem seriously. Um, certainly wasn't done under Jeremy Corbyn. Um... And finally, um, with Labour, immigration, you know, this is a really hot button topic. Now, I, I don't agree with those neo-right wingers who say we should just like, end all immigration. I think there's good immigration and bad immigration. Um, I don't agree with the Tories as it depends on someone's salary. Um, but I do think Labour needs to recognise that you cannot have an open door policy. You cannot have a situation where there's just this unlimited um number of people coming in on boats um without a deterrent it's not sustainable we're a small country literally we are a physically small country but we are a densely populated country this isn't scaremongering this is facts um and i think the left is too naive on this because their whole focus is what about compassion well i get that i think you'd be made of stone if you didn't have some human compassion for people fleeing war zones um, but we have to have a sustainable situation and you cannot have a sustainable situation where you have too many people coming in at once without proper vetting. Um, many of those people don't share our values. This is a reality. 
I'm afraid. And I think there's too many on the left who have this knee-jerk reaction. Oh, you're pandering to the far right. Or even you're being racist. It's, it's pathetic. It's a pathetic smear. I think there are conservatives who are a bit heartless. They've got no human sort of compassion for people in this situation. But um, I think Labour could go along with some government policies. For example, a hard, hard line on people traffickers, things like that would be good. But there has to be a deterrent. You cannot have a situation where you just have this endless number of people coming in with no vetting. Um, the system clearly needs to improve. Um, but I am not anti-immigration. I believe that there's a lot of people that bring um, bring something to our country. I mean, I don't think we should put up blocks to Filipino nurses or Indian doctors, people who are helping us, people who are, um, you know, doing something in our society. Um, but I do think we should be very assertive about people coming in who may have very different values from us. Um, we just need to be assertive about it. Um, and I think Labour needs to prove that they are. Because Labour's reaction to this far too often, or left-wing people's reaction, is knee-jerk. It's like, oh, you can't say that, that's racist. Um, they need to wake up, quite frankly. So... Those are the things I want Labour to improve on. Um, what's Labour good on? I do think they're more compassionate on overall on issues like homelessness and um, and the unemployed and mental health and things like that. I think overall Labour has a better track record on it. Um, I think the Blair administration, you know, people can demonise it as much as they want over Iraq, but the Blair administration done a lot of good things, actually. It brought in the minimum wage. There was the longest period of sustained growth in modern times. There was a lot of good things that the Blair administration can point to. Now, if you have, I think ideally, ideally, a Labour leader would be not Tony Blair, but not Jeremy Corbyn. Something in the middle, but electable. There was points Miliband came close to it, although I think he was a little bit, perhaps, too much on the left. Um, but... What you need is a leader who can be electable again without being Tony Blair. Because unfortunately, although I think Blair was in many ways a great prime minister, I think there were obvious contentions with his premiership. Um, big Brother was one of the big ones of the Blair years. The Iraq war was a complete disaster. Um, so a Labour Party that um, is very much in favour of freedom and very much not big brother but you know can show that it's a party of government can show it's a serious party can get itself away from woke politics can distance itself from far left ideology these sort of things can show this could actually be a credible labor government um so you know i mean we have three prime ministers clement Attlee, harold wilson tony blair all three governments done some good things so i think those are the sort of aspirations labor should have Labour can govern, actually, if it really, really gets itself sorted out. And I would definitely be considering supporting them if that was the case. I'll round this up because I've been speaking now for about 40 minutes. So I'll round this up. Let me know your thoughts on where you live. Is it a Tory or a Labour seat? How do you feel? Who are you going to vote for? Etc. Etc. Thanks for watching.